Well, hello and welcome to Transform Tuesday, where we talk about Alpha Transform. My name is Dave McCormick. I'm VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software, and I am pleased to be joined by two people today. We have Bob Moore, who's our VP of Mobility, and we have Sarah Mitchell, who is in charge of documentation and does a lot of other stuff around here as well. So can't wait to get started. Today, we're going to be talking again about Zapier. And the reason we're going to be talking about Zapier, let me just go ahead and share my screen, do, 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 is because we have gone from private beta to official beta to now being an official integration in Zapier. And we could not have done it without the help of many of you guys here on the call, many of you attendees here. So we really appreciate your help in trying out Zapier. I know a few of you we're on some of the sessions where we built some live Zapier applications. So today, sort of in honor of that, I wanna go over Zapier. Then I'm gonna have Bob Moore show you 10 new pre-built Zaps that you can start using right away with Transform. And then Sarah is gonna show you something a little bit more complicated where she's used Zapier to uh, take parent-child or relational data and actually unpack it for use um, in an application. So let's get started. So for those of you who are brand new, Zapier is a uh, workflow tool. And it works uh, basically by with a combination of what we call triggers and actions. A trigger is when something happens. So for example, in Alpha Transform, when you fill out a form, that counts as a trigger. And when something is triggered, um, we can alert Zapier, or Zapier can know about it, and it can actually take the data that you submitted in Transform and then use it with another application. And with Zapier, they have over a thousand other applications that are built in. So they have applications for sending email, they have applications for sending SMS, they have applications for writing to spreadsheets and writing to databases, and just doing a whole bunch of other things. And in fact, Zapier now has in the more uh, advanced integrations, the ability to do if-then types of logic and, and really build out some really sophisticated systems and you can do all of that without doing any code whatsoever. Zapier is really just a, a click and go type of system. And it's one that we've really been impressed with the more that we work with. We've also been impressed not only with the software itself, but also with the people working at the company. And I think Bob can talk a little bit about that as well. They're actually quite delightful uh, to work with and they've got a really cool system. So I had shown a recipe. I'm just gonna go through it, uh, a Zap um, that I had built. This is an early one and I'm, and I'm just gonna sort of show you the basics behind it, and then we'll start getting into some more interesting and involved examples. So this one, um, here's a zap where if you fill out a transform form, uh, I'm sorry, when you fill out a line in Google Sheets, it will actually create a new dispatch application in your transform app. So for example, let's say you had three people out in the field, you could go into, log into Google, log into Google Office and, and go to Google Sheets and open up a particular sheet and you could enter in the name of one of these field service people that you wanna send out. You can say the address, for example, of where they're going and what they're supposed to do when they get there. And that could all be dispatched automatically to their phone using Zapier. The way that's done is, um, so let me show you this. This is basically by creating what we call a Zap. When you log into zapbeer.com and create an account, which is free for certain things. If you're only doing a couple of steps in your Zap, then Zapier is free and it's totally worth playing with. Um, anyway, once you log in, you click make a Zap and you choose what the trigger is going to be. What we did was, since our trigger is going to be uh, when something is filled in in, uh, in a spreadsheet, we set up a spreadsheet first. So we set up a spreadsheet that's got first name, last name, street address, and the issue. And then what we did was we went into Zapier, we created a new Zap and we created the trigger. The trigger in this case was the Google Sheet. So when a new spreadsheet row is added to the Google Sheet, we have it, um, and I called my street, by the way, uh, Transform Tuesday Test. And the sheet within that workbook was called sheet one. We have selected the action as transform. So when a new record is filled into Google Sheets, we want them to do something in transform. And that thing we do in transform is fill out a row. So in order for that to work, once I've selected alpha transform as my app, I need to in 
put in an API key. Uh, many of you already know how to do this, but let me just show you real quick. To do that, you're just going to go to transform.alphasoftware.com, log into your account, and just go down to Developer Options and click on Get API Key. I typically use an API key with all permissions, uh, so you just select All, you click Get, it gives you the key, and then you can paste it right into this box over here. When um, when that's in, it'll ask you which accounts, uh, because remember, as a user, you can have multiple accounts. So I selected uh, a particular account, and then I set up a data. And here's here's what you need to fill out when you're setting up a transform form data. You need to tell it what name it is, and you need to tell the user who will be entering the data. So I've hard coded this to a particular name, me, Dave at Alpha Software, but we could have just as easily had it read from a row in a spreadsheet. Um, then after that, we went and we started telling what we wanted to do with these fields, which we've selected here. We took a look to see what the data looks like, and we built out a simple form whoops, for collecting that data, which I've got this in the wrong order, so let me just jump up here. And in our, our uh, simple form, we just built a simple transform form with first name, last name, street address, the issue, notes, whether or not it's resolved, and, and the signature. And then when we entered in a record in that form ID, it inserted a pre-filled out uh, form this we did back on uh, July 20, 31st with the actual, with the record. So in other words, enter something into Google Sheets and have it appear in Transform. Now this is all available in the Alpha Anywhere video library if you wanna see an example of this from start to finish and try it yourself. And I'd also like to announce that we have, speaking of video libraries, a new video playlist up on YouTube, and I'm going to go find that for you right now so that you can easily find your Transform Tuesday uh, episodes. Let me just grab this one, Transform Tuesday playlist, and I'm going to paste this into the chat window, and there it is. You're probably going to want to grab that link and bookmark it. So if I show you what that looks like here, oh, We now have all of our uh, episodes. We tell you what's in them. We tell you what date they're there. So they're all nice and organized. So that's the new playlist. You can find that there in the chat window. And we're actually going to have a version of this built right into our website, which will probably be the preferred way to get these videos in the future. But I just wanted to show you that for now. All right, so going back here, um, once that is all set up, the, um, the person simply opens up the form that's been submitted to them and they'll find that it's pre-populated. Here's the, here's the name, here's the address, here's what the issue was, and then it would be up to the inspector then to fill out the rest of the field. For example, the notes field and whether or not it was resolved, and then that can get passed right up onto the Transform Cloud. So I would like now, so that was a pretty simple example, put something into a spreadsheet and have it appear as a ticket on your phone but we have now 10 other zaps. And uh, Bob, if you were there, I'd like you to go through them since you took through the time to actually set them up. So let me just switch over here and take you off mute. All right, can you, can there you, you are, I sure can. Uh, can I go ahead and make so you the presenter? Gonna... I'm gonna go ahead and uh, make you the presenter if that's okay. Mm -hmm. And you should see a dialog box. And uh, I can now see your screen. Great. And there are the Transform Zaps. Okay. So uh, what we did um, as, as part of our integrations uh, with, with Zapier was come up with uh, 10 different uh, integrations that you know, I think would be commonly uh, used by Transform uh, users. So, um, and what, what these let you do is, is they'll just kind of like talk you through like, okay, exactly. You don't have to, you know, it's very, very simple to use these. You could do these on your own too, but um, these are sort of pre-baked. So this is uh, saving new transform form entries as uh, new Google Sheets spreadsheet rows. Over here, this adds transform form submissions to Firebase as new records. So Firebase is a um, 
It's a NoSQL uh, database, so um, and it, that works quite well. Um, this is nice. You can schedule a date and time to send a new transform form to a user. So let's say every Wednesday, you know, some guy does an inspection at a, at a building or something. Um, you could schedule that to happen and then you could maybe pre-populate the form with some of the data. Uh, over here, uh, we're add new transform form submissions to PostgreSQL uh, as new database records. So uh, this was kind of neat. I, I set up a Heroku account and, and then set up a, a PostgreSQL database and as I uh, fill out my transform form and submit it, uh, we, we can map those fields to specific database uh, fields and, and uh, generate a new record. You can also do updates too. Uh, over here, we're just sending an SMS message uh, when transform form submissions come in, in case you just want to know oh, a new form came in. And here we're doing the same with email. Uh, and here, with these integrations are with with the sort of the baked in Zapier uh, actions. And let's see, I think I've got some more. Let's see. This is uh, the one Dave was just showing the Google Sheets spreadsheet rows. Uh, you fill them out, and and then as a new row goes in, it goes into Transform. Uh, this is uh, Transform form submissions. So this is integra integrated with Salesforce. So they'll go in as Salesforce leads. Again, you map the fields accordingly. Um, and this is similar, except this goes in as new Salesforce contacts. You know, so if you were uh, like at a trade show or something and collecting people's names and so on, you could automate this process here. And uh, and over here we're adding. Uh, creating uh, Google Calendar events when a transform form uh, is submitted. Now there's a couple of other integrations that I'm working on right now, and that's the integration to, to uh, SQL Server, and, and the other will be to, uh, to MySQL. Mm -hmm. And then we'll just continuously add more and more integrations. You can do this very easily on your own, but it's kind of nice to have these sort of pre-baked um, uh, um, templates and that, mm -hmm. that's that's what these are so like let's take a look at this one so this is uh, add new transform form submissions to Postgres I think it will remember all my connections from last time so when a new form is submitted um, I've already established my connection uh, with transform and now I need to select what form do I want to work with so I'll say I'm gonna work with my uh, work completed form and here it brings in sample data so you can just take a look at what is the sample data that it pulled in mm -hmm. say okay that makes sense notice that we pass all the metadata in uh, that Zapier requested that we do that so I think it actually sort of clouds this thing a little bit but uh, they had requested that we do that um, if that bothers you, I think you might be able to put a filter on that, but you get used to it after a while. So, and then in Postgres, it says, well, what do you want to do? We want to add new row. And again, I've got my connection already set. And what table do I want to use? Um, so, oh, I have a to-dos table. So, well, that's not going to work so well here. I don't have my other database. You have a work completed table, uh, right? But here, well, actually, let's look at what we could do with our to do. So there's a there's a character called task, right? And so I could say, well, I'm going to map. It doesn't really matter what, but I'm going to map my additional work uh, field to the task. Now notice I'm only seeing um, I'm only seeing this one field, and um, in order to, and that's because it's the, it's the only required field was was this particular one. But there's a bunch of other fields. So if you click on Show Advanced Objects, you'll see everything, you know, category, date, ID, status. Okay, so that's what's in this particular table. Um, and I'm not going to go ahead and map any more fields because I don't have to. Um, and, and, and the mapping that I'm doing from the transform form is really incorrect. I should have actually picked the, the to, -dos, uh, to do form. But any, in any case, um, 
And if there were data in this task field in the sample that I pulled down, I could send a test to, po uh, to Postgres right now and then log into my Postgres account and I could see or into my Heroku account and see it in my Postgres uh, database. So that's the way mm -hmm. that would work. And then you just turn it on and, uh, and, and it'll go. So that's pretty oh. much an overview of, of, of those integrations. If we made it look easy, it's because it's easy. <laughs> that pair is really a, is a pleasure to work with, I, I would say. Yeah, and there's a lot yeah. you can do with it. Um, we, there are a number of tutorials that Zapier has done. I think they call it Zapier University. And you can do some really interesting things. You can, um, like, let's say, for example, when somebody fills out a, um, uh, maybe it's like, a, I don't know, let's say they're, they're filling out like a reservation form or something like that, right? And you want to, um, you know, you want to remind them, like, a week from now that, hey, you reserve to go to our whatever, our thing. And uh, so you can actually, they have a delay action. So you can say, well, delay this for, and and, and a week from today or, or on a specific day, you know, remind this guy that, that he's got this appointment or something like that. There's all kinds of like cool stuff you can do. So um, if you get into it, I would suggest taking a look at those videos. They're short. They're like one to three minute long. And, um, uh, they're 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 quite good. So look up Zapier University. They're on YouTube. So um, good to know about. Excellent. Thanks very much, Bob. Mm -hmm. Now Sarah has an interesting Zap that she put together. And Sarah, if you're mm -hmm. on the line, I would actually like to make you the presenter. And she, uh, I remember Sarah texted me and she said, "Okay, I've got Zapier and I'm bringing in some data, but some of it is is one to many data. Uh, is there?" Uh, can Zapier like sort of separate this out the ch uh, the child records so I can I can display them separately, and uh, I said not that I know of, and so Sarah went off and figured out a way to do it. So she's here to to show you what she did. So uh, hopefully I've explained that properly. Sarah, can I go ahead and make you the presenter? You can, right. and uh, I apologize in advance. I'm Sorry about working through a cold, so yeah. I'll, I'll try to mute myself so I don't cough your ears off, but. <laughs> That might happen. Um, so yeah, Dave, you described it pretty pretty close to what I'd done. Um, I made this travel log, um, yeah. and the thought I had was like go out with Transform and capture some photos and write some notes and then dump it into my Evernote. Um, but I wanted to get more than one photo. I wanted to get lots of photos. Um, so I made this, and uh, when I went to Zapier, um, there was no, there's no way in their Evernote connector to like loop through nested data. And as it turns out, Zapier doesn't have great support in general for nested data. So to get around that, I actually inserted a second action um, called run JavaScript. And uh, what this action let me do, I'll make this a little bit bigger is it allowed me to take my photos and my descriptions and then loop through them to generate the um, basically HTML output uh, that I needed in Evernote. So I did that here. And while I was in here, I realized, oh, you know, that location where I was at, I would like to display it as a map. So I, on a, you know, as a side, I took advantage of the Google Maps static map. Um, <clears throat> Don't read my API key. Um, <laughs> uh, It'll be changed. API, this, basically, yeah. mm -hmm. to generate a static map that I could embed in Evernote. Um, and so uh, I got it working, uh, which is great. So this is my entry here over in Evernote. And this was my test one with some cat photos. Um, and then this was another one from, from DevCon. Um, and I've got a third one in here that I haven't I haven't done just yet, uh, but just to, to show you guys um, that this works, because I don't know if you saw that warning at the very beginning, but my zap isn't on, because I actually need to upgrade for a three-step zap. Um, but if you go down here to my template, here's my, my Evernote template. It's my entry, the date and location, these two things here, uh, my map image, which was generated by this run JavaScript step. Um, the entry, uh, this text here, and then that images, which was also um, from that second one, which is this 
down here in, in here, your output is uh, it's a set of name value pairs. So images is my image HTML, which was built up here in this for loop. And then my map image was is map, which I which I created right here. Interesting. So that that parameter, that output parameter, then is passed to the Evernote um, portion of your Zap. Is that yeah. Correct. Yeah. So like when you're in here inserting. Um, and that's what gives you those choices. Is yeah. What so you, you when you're inserting stuff, right? You can select from my first action, which was transform, which is which is all those fields. Yeah. Um, or uh, way down here at the bottom somewhere. Oops, it's gone. Um, if you select that run JavaScript, it shows you everything here, the ID, the images, and the map image. Um, these are the ones I created. Uh, and then and other stuff. Well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, as well as it's very helpful down here at the bottom, there's this little like missing choices, complete step two. So if you're like, oh, what I wanted to create isn't there, it kind of reminds you to go back and and add it. Um, so this uh, this test step, which I'm going to run again, um, this is uh, from training day, which isn't in here yet. That's the that's going to be the title that should show up here when I run it. Mm -hmm. Let's go down here and just send send test to Evernote and wait for that. <clears throat> and it says it's successful. So if I come back over here and run my sync again, there it is at the top. There it is. Wow. Yep. And you know, there's there's the location, there are the photos, and that was uh, that's what I uh, figured out in terms of um, getting through that data uh, from those nested um, parent-child relationships in my in my form. Wow. Okay. So um, just interrupting for a second, someone just wrote in here uh, who said that while we've been doing this demo. He was able to log into Zapier and set up an integration where he now has data being fed into a SQL Server table all, all during this time. So, well, can, and uh, sort of thank you for the integration. Well, th thanks very much for for taking the time to try that out. That's that's awesome. I'm glad that it works. So, um, yeah, Sarah, that is really neat. Would you um, consider just pasting that code into the chat window in case someone wants to look at it themselves and sort of this code? Out it? Yeah, just to see if they could figure out. Uh, <clears throat> yep. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. Yeah. You want to remove that key? I'm, I'm gonna. Re I'm gonna go delete that key. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> Get your own key, please. Yeah. I will. Uh. Yeah. Where, where's the button? All right. Chat. Um. Yeah. Entire audience. So this is this is the code. Hopefully, it doesn't transfer anything into a movie. Well, let's see. Maybe we've never uh never tried this. This is an experiment. We'll see how it works. Yeah, but like oh, the important thing to come through fine. Yeah. Okay, great. good. Yeah, but like the important thing is like when you input your input data, uh -huh. here is it's it's an object they create for you called input data. I see. The value yeah. on it is the word you put in here. Uh -huh. These you can just select from those fields Whichever in your fields, transform right. data. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's gonna say um it'll say atom group or or whatever your group is and then and then the two listing the uh, zapier concatenates all that stuff together into a comma delimited list when it's actually embedded into a template which is why um why i'm using this split on a comma to yeah. turn it into an array but that's gotcha. yeah for for stuff where you're just trying to format it into like a report um this works great i have not really gotten into like how would i handle doing like uh, parent-child data input into a database. I'm not sure how you would loop over that. They have some provisions on some of their zaps out there um, to loop over that type of data, but sure. the support yeah. is limited, and and it's it's up to the people who build the adapter to to add that for you. So um, right. and for well, you more complex right. stuff, you might need to actually just go straight to Alpha anywhere and use our API to to pull that into your your databases. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, cool. Awesome. Thank you very much, sir. I appreciate it. Um, so we've come to the end of our session, more or less. Do, if there are any questions, you can go ahead and ask them in the questions box of the GoToWebinar control panel. And I'll give you guys about 30 seconds to, to type something in. I love radio silence. It's one of my favorite things. I, I could blow my nose. <laughs> <laughs> Unmute, please. <laughs> okay. <laughs>
That looks like it. It doesn't look like anyone's writing in with the questions. Well, hey, thanks very much, everyone who attended today. Thank you, Bob and Sarah, for presenting. And we hope to see you next Tuesday at the next Transform Tuesday. Take care and have a great week. Bye-bye.